Hello, my name is Kevin Danikowski, and this episode is on organizational bureaucracy. So let's build a bureaucracy. What kind of bureaucracy, government or organizational? Let's start with organizational. And let's make our organization a widget enterprise. So our organizational bureaucracy needs some administration board, right? That is the nature of a bureaucracy. First, how do we want to lead? There is quite a few types of leaders and managers, so I'll try to give you the overview. First, let's talk about the three outlined by Max Weber. First, Weber said that there was traditional authority leaders, which gained their power from tradition. They were grandfathered in like kings of patriarchies or lords in feudalism. That is the nature of this traditional authority. Next, Weber said that there are charismatic authority leaders who, by the inspiration of others, gained leadership roles and were seen as extraordinary people. The authority is usually associated with social movements, like for that of Martin Luther King. Lastly, there is legal, rational authority leaders who, to no surprise, conform to laws and rationality. So legal or rational authority is that of conventional regulations. Well, since legal, rational authority and traditional authority seem no fun, we want to make our widget enterprise tons of fun, we'll choose charismatic authority. Now, what kind of leadership or decision-making will we have? Well, there are four main types that you should know. First, authoritarian leaders will make all the decisions while taking no input from others. Not the kind of person we want dealing with our widgets. After authoritarian leaders, we have next, instrumental leaders, which are those that focus on the task at hand and nothing else. Instrumental leaders don't care about you or me, they care if the task gets done. And again, not very inspiring for our revolutionary widget enterprise. After instrumental leaders, we have democratic leaders, which are those who take into account everyone's ability, divides the work up appropriately, and works together to get things done. I'm all about everyone being a part of the action. I don't know if I'm so much for that equality life. Just kidding. But let's see what the last option is. Lastly, we have expressive leaders who work together towards a group cohesion and a personal well-being. This is powerful because as long as everyone's happy, our widget enterprise is going to thrive. Just a side note, you may have heard about opinion leaders. These are just any person who others go to for advice and information on a specific subject, like an opinion leader of Stephen Hawking's for information on physics. So we picked an expressive leader, now let's pick our managers. Do we want a Theory Y or Theory X manager? Why managers care about why the employees are working because Theory Y assumes that the employees need higher order motivations. They need a why. So what kind of motivations do they provide? Intrinsic, of course. By contrast, Theory X assumes that people are inherently unmotivated. And I would say many people are. So how would we motivate them? Well, extrinsic rewards, of course, at least for ex-managers. Also with punishments. So let's pick a theory Y manager because we both understand the impact of Maslow's hierarchy of needs on our organizations. Helping employees self-actualize is the key for their well-being in humanistic psychology. So we chose a theory Y manager. There are other relevant low-yield theories as well here called chaos and systems theory, for example, but these are discussed in other episodes. Now, what kind of organization do we want to be? Well, it would have to be a formal organization with a set job titles and formal rules to follow because if we made an informal organization, it would be based on social relationships and everyone possibly working one job one day and another the next. We couldn't make this super efficient because remember, we want to sell tons and tons of these widgets. Now, what kind of formal organization do we want to be then? How about one where everyone just does whatever the hell we tell them to? But to give them a bit of intrinsic motivation, maybe we'll throw in an occasional, hey, remember our motive, no child left without a widget. Well, that would be a coercive organization because we are coercing these people to do the things like a military or a prison would. That wouldn't be a pleasant organization, so let's make another. Maybe we make it all volunteer for the greater moral cause of no child left without a widget. I mean, who wouldn't want to join this beautiful movement? You're right, I wouldn't want to either. Gotta get paid to buy more of those Tic Tacs from the last episode. 
All right, scratch off normative organization because normative organizations require that we all volunteer and ain't nobody got time for that. Maybe if we pay people, does that work? I mean, everyone wants money, right? Perfect. A good utilitarian approach. Everyone gets paid for what they contribute. So we've decided Widget Enterprise will be a utilitarian organization. We're going to need to incorporate some industrial organizational psychology, though, because we don't want to get screwed over by the employees. Any industrial organizational psychologist is going to know about the Peter Principle. Do you remember what the Peter Principle is? The Peter Principle states that once you get to the highest level you could ever reach in an organization, you'll begin to work only as hard as necessary to keep your job. Also, any industrial organizational psychologist is going to tell you that no matter what you do, how noble your widget cause, that your utilitarian organization is going to eventually start to be influenced by the iron law of oligarchy. Iron law of oligarchy dictates the inevitable development into an oligarchy, which is just a small group that controls the members below it. Our widget enterprise will undoubtedly reach success and undergo McDonald'sization. For real, this is an actual term that you have to know. McDonald'sization is when your business becomes larger and available to the greater public. Characteristics will start to become heavily emphasized, such as by efficiency, calculability, predictability, control, and cutting costs. But hey, it's exactly what you pay for, right? This may involve thinking of our workers or services they provide as commodities. Thus, they and their service are subjected to commodification. Pretty straightforward. Lastly, I want to end with a riddle. If it takes five machines five minutes to make five widgets, how long does it take 100 machines to make 100 widgets? Five minutes! Because a machine can make a widget in five minutes. But in summary, our widget business picked the charismatic authority with an expressive leader along with Theory Y managers. In addition, we made a formal organization which also is a utilitarian organization which later became so powerful that it ruled the world. The 